as tonight, Iowa State traveling to take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Hi again, everyone, with Kevin Lehman. This is B.J. Shaben, Big 12 Conference play on the road for the first time this year. And, Kevin, something has to give in this matchup as both teams are looking for their first win in league play. Well, both teams coming off really good first halves. Iowa State leading Texas at a half on Wednesday night and Nebraska leading number three ranked Kansas at a half but they both end up in losses now these coaches hope that they don't have the hangover effect they need to get off to good starts tonight which could play huge here tonight we'll see how it goes as we progress forward now speaking of moving forward for Iowa State they have a player that has been lightning as of late Marquez Gilstrap has been playing really well the last few games. Well, Marquez Gilstrap gives Iowa State that big athletic wing they haven't had since the departure of Wesley Johnson to Syracuse. And what a great start he had in Big 12 play. 20 points, 13 rebounds against Texas. BJ, that was his sixth double-double of the season. Well, the Nebraska Cornhuskers have been suffering with a couple of players with the flu. Some have been out with injury. They did get a lift to their lineup when Christian Stan Hardinger was actually inserted into it. Well, Christian had to sit out the first 15 games to meet NCAA eligibility requirements, came off the bench against a and and had 13 points. He's averaging 10.5 points in Big 12 play. He gives a big lift to the Cornhuskers. He's a player that they really like. Well, one thing's for sure, we're expecting a very competitive basketball game tonight. Time now for our Keys to Victory, brought to you by your local Dodge dealers. Get to your local Dodge dealer today to check out Dodge's full line of vehicles. Kevin, what does Iowa State need to do? BJ, number one key is Deontay Garrett hit a log 37 minutes against Texas. Now, he is driving the bus tonight. He's got to get people in the right positions and get the ball through that pressure defense. Also, Iowa State has to splash that three ball. Nebraska likes to double team, has made people open. Lucas Stagger has done very well here. Nebraska, he has averaged over 17 points a game because that ball comes out of the double team, and Luca is open. And Nebraska? Oh, post touches. Jorge Brian Diaz is shooting 75% in Big 12 play. He's 12 of 17. They got to get him touches. And what Nebraska feeds off, BJ, they guard you with energy. They get some excitement in this place. Great turnovers, get points off of their turnovers. Well, if there's one team that Coach Greg McDermott likes to see on the schedule in the Big 12, it's Nebraska. He's had Iowa State has won some close games over the last two and a half, three weeks. And now trying to finish this one. Now here's the most important thing here. You've got to get the ball inbounded cleanly because Nebraska is going to be in the pass lane. He's trying to tip one loose now. Well, Garrett will get it in backcourt, and he's fouled right away by Richardson. Okay. Nebraska did have a foul to give. Well, now you have a shot clock. It's not a situation, so they're going to foul again immediately <laughs> to put somebody on the line. Now we get Lucas Steiger in the game. Coach Mack with his free throw shooters and his ball handers. And Justin Hamilton also back in. Dendy will check out. Gilstrap will also check out. I found it interesting that Doc Setter fouled in that situation because he was going to get the ball back at about the six or seven second mark, but now shot clock not a factor. Iowa State has to ball, handle the ball cleanly and make free throws. Sometimes you just feel better about having the ball in your hands, correct? And now a foul by Jeter with 9.3 to play. Lucas Steiger will go to the line. Steiger on the season right at 80%, but he's only been there 10 times. Well, I still thought that was a smart play by Deontay Garrett to get the ball out of his hands before they fouled him into Lucas' hands, who's a better free throw shooter. But Lucas has been sitting on the bench here for about the last 10 minutes because christopherson has been in there. So he's loosening up his legs right now. Ron Dendy back into the game. And it is a one and one. Big make. Huge delivers. And this one's bigger. So we can make it a two possession game with nine seconds left. The miss, but the rebound to Iowa State. Steiger was taken down. Now it's tied up. And a possession arrow keeps it with. Nebraska. They get both to Nebraska. Bo Pelini would like the tackle on this play. Wow. And Steiger's hurt. And he was literally tackled here. The takedown by Richardson. Play. Richardson with the single leg takedown. But the clock clip kept running was one good point there. With five seconds to play. Steiger, well, he's grabbing his knee and he's well, not putting a whole lot of weight on it. Now, Iowa State talking about their foul situation. Coach Mack coming with his assistance because they have a foul to give in this situation. Well, here it is again. 
It's his right knee that is giving him a fit now. Well, you take a look at the timeouts left. Nebraska just burnt their last timeout. Iowa State with one remaining. You're right, Kevin. The Cyclones do have a foul to give here. Possession arrow now with Iowa State. You have a foul to give, and then you also have an opportunity to foul to put them at the line to shoot a one-and-one -one up three. And that's a philosophy I subscribe to wholeheartedly. I've had too many threes thrown it at the buzzer to put games in overtime. I'm a firm believer that you need to foul in that situation, especially with only five seconds left in the shot clock. So if you can foul once here, BJ, take a second or two off. Nebraska now has the ball with about three and a half, three seconds left. Most importantly, though, not to foul someone in the act of shooting here. No question. 56-53, Iowa State with a lead on Nebraska with five seconds to play. Marquez Gilstrap, his seventh double-double of the season, 15 points, 12 rebounds. You must make Nebraska catch the ball in the backcourt. You let, cannot let them throw it over your head. And then when that player starts to bounce, you reach in and create the foul. Makes him take it out of bounds again. The Huskers just two of eight from the line tonight. Now the Huskers with all their players in the backcourt. This is an interesting set because they're not going to try and throw it down court. Now they run. Gallegos will have foul. it. Jeter the three. It's an air ball and Iowa State has done it.